Hello and welcome to another Key Smash Studios video. Today we're going to talk about scaffolding and game design and development as opposed to a direct tutorial. I'm here in editor with a project that we decided not to go forward with. I want to use this project as a way to talk about scaffolding. In order to talk about scaffolding we have to talk about sort of level design as a whole when you approach a project. I'll first say that that scaffolding is just sort of the process of of letting a player ease into something you're 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 letting them learn the mechanics one by one and not throwing multiple mechanics at a player at, at one time if you're making games you really want to be able to not create a tutorial but like create a tutorial like atmosphere where the player learns all the mechanics of the game and then is finally challenged by all the mechanics of the game and that goes for large mechanics and small mechanics. And I think we did a fairly good job at setting up scaffolding in this game. Uh, and, and I'm going to play through a few levels just to orient how that scaffolding works. This game is a 2D puzzler uh, about an ant trying to get to the, to the queen. And, and when you start, you start on the first level. And really this level introduces the two main mechanics that a player will need in any level and you can't really scaffold these two mechanics because they're intrinsic to every single le level so we have our ant here and we can dig through the dirt with him uh, with our mouse and you see that when we hit the leaf the food of the ants uh, that, that the ant gains energy back if you run out of energy you eat too many dirt squares you die and you have to try again so these are fairly simple mechanics, so it's, it's relatively okay to have two of them at once. I would still prefer, if I redid this level, to probably just have a start and an end square and no food, you just get to, from the start square to the end square and that's it. Um, but as a whole, this is a really simple first level. It just really introduces the player to the style of the game of, hey, you have a start square, you have an end square, let's get to the end square and then almost immediately in terms of scaffolding we go from a really simple design of that scaffolding to a much more complex version of it and it's important to note that you're not treating your players like idiots when you're doing scaffolding you're challenging them with the mechanics you're just not challenging them with all of the mechanics at the same time so this is not a simple level where you can just go straight and go to the end and you, you die before you even get close. Um, this is a level where you have to methodically plan out your route and then once you do that you can get to the end of the level. There's no tricks to this level but you do have to sit and think for a second and plan out the optimal route for the ant to take. this is the optimal route for the ant to take and it's still fairly like I'm going from start square to food to end square um, but it throws a few more bins in it. it it challenges the player in a way they haven't been previously challenged much like this level so this level there's not enough energy to get from the start to the end so you have to go out of your way to get food and then come back come down and then go over so when we're scoring this we use the a star algorithm for whatever it's worth and we've come up with an algorithm that allows it to account for food in the path there's only a few optimal routes in the game um, so this this level introduces a new ish mechanic of this optimal route if you were to come across directly to the food and then go straight down and then get to the end. You can get to the end but you're not at an optimal route. You have to go to the food then come back then come down then go to the end to get the the full most efficient energy route in, in this level. So we're going from level to level and each time we're doing a level we're introducing some new facet for the player to learn. In here, on our fourth level, we finally get to the point where we're starting to introduce a trick to the player. So you only need one energy 
to get from our start square to our end square, that's this energy. This energy is a trick. It's a false goal for the player to get. If they go get it, they will get two star or one star in terms of efficiency on this level. And you'll notice that this is a fairly core mechanic to the gameplay of the 2D puzzler, right? Tricks are in almost every 2D puzzler, but we don't introduce it until the fourth level of the first world. We still don't have any enemies. We still don't have complex levels. We, we are finally introducing our first trick on the fourth level. This is so people can learn the gameplay of the style of game if they've never played it before at a gradual pace, but it's still a fun pace because each time there's a new challenge on each level. So if I jump ahead here, I can go to levels and I can go to a different hill. And we see that once on a global scale, once we've mastered the basic movement, we go to our next hill and we're introduced with a new challenge. We still have the standard gameplay. We don't have to worry about the food. This is still a very simple level. We're jumping back to that simple level, but we're introduced with a brand new mechanic. This is an enemy that goes only horizontally in patrols. They don't chase, but if you happen to be there when the enemy touches you, you die. It's a very simple way for us to scaffold in the mechanic of there being an enemy and you have to learn how that enemy works to be able to progress to the next level. And again, just like before, each time you iterate through a level, it gets more complex. You add more death so that by the time you get to the end of the second hill, vastly complex levels where you are a worker ant trying to get to the ant queen and you have to get past multiple enemies, you have traps, you have an optimal route that might not be efficient, or it might not be completely blatantly obvious to players, you have timing skill changes. All of these are implemented over different levels so that the player can finally understand, hey, this is what's happening in this, this puzzle game, this is what I need to change, this is what I need to do differently. And if we go to our third hill, Again, we see the scaffolding. This time we're not gonna dumb it down all the way to the point where you just have a start square and an end square, but we see that we have elements from our first set of worlds in here. We have the food that we need to get to the end square. We have our horizontal enemy, and we have our first vertical enemy. This type of scaffolding is really important in level-based games, and I would argue that it's important in almost every base style of game um, whether it's levels or an open world MMORPG or or even something as simple as a, a word puzzle game they all have scaffolding to introduce you to mechanics and those are super important because no one wants to sit through a tutorial they just want to hop right into the gameplay get that engaging feeling of playing a game and that's what scaffolding allows you to do without having a direct tutorial. I hope you like this style of video. We're going to do a few more game design videos on our main channel, so keep an eye out for them. If you have any topics in game design you would like us to discuss, please let us know down in the comments below. Feel free to join our Discord, ask any questions, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help, and we'll see you next week.